Uh, our next church word that we're going to go through today is uh, contrition, or another form of it might be contrite. Uh, to talk about that, we're going to look at Psalm 32, and we're going to think a little bit about David and his story. Uh, you might know a little bit about David's story. David was the king of Israel, the second king of Israel. And David was, was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. He's often called the man after God's own heart. Yet David uh, has some very public sins that uh, that get exposed in his time on earth. It started with David on the rooftop of his palace, lusting after a woman who was not his wife. And just that, that simple sin of, of lust uh, spiraled out of control. And it led to, to other things like adultery, like uh, trying to, to cover up his sin by, by lying and tricking Uriah, uh, Bathsheba's wife. Uh, and then it ended up in, in David having Uriah killed on the front lines. And so all of this is well documented in the Bible. And we see all of the atrocities that David uh, committed. And then in the Psalms, we get a little picture into David's heart. We get a little picture into how David was feeling in these times. And we get a little picture of David's contrition. So David, uh, it, although there may have been times while he was committing these sins that, that he didn't feel sorry for them, uh, he eventually did. Uh, no, most notably when, when the prophet Nathan, the, his pastor, comes to him and, and says, David, you've sinned against God. And he tells a story in order to show David what he has done. David confesses his sin. He says, I, I have sinned against God and Nathan forgives him. Uh, that's a pretty quick exchange, but we get a look into David's heart here in Psalm 32 when he says this, when I kept silent, talking about the times where, where he hadn't confessed his sin yet, where the sin was still weighing on him and eating away at his soul. Uh, he says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. What David is saying here is, is when his sin was weighing him down and really eating away at him, he felt like God was, was mad at him, that, that God's hand was heavy upon him and that his, his strength was sapped. It was as if all of his strength was taken away because of the effects that this sin is having on him, the, the guilt and shame that, that came along with that. But then David says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. David wasn't going to try to, to get around the consequences of his sin anymore. He was going to fess up to it. He was going to admit that he had committed a sin. Um, he was no longer going to hide that uh, to, to God or anybody else. Uh, which makes sense because we can't hide anything from God anyways. But, but David now, with, with a contrite heart, comes to God. And, and so what that means is that, that David felt sorry for his sin. Contrition mean, is this feeling of sorrow over sin. Um, but contrition is also uh, taking that to, to God and, and confessing that to God. And, and then we see how faithful God is to us. He says, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. When we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, contrition does not end in despair. But contrition is sorrow over sin and a desire to, to rely on Jesus and to, to rid yourself of that sin forever. So when you hear contrition or contrite in worship now, in, in a sermon, in a devotion, you're going to have a little better idea of what contrition means because you'll have the picture of David in your head and you'll think of all the times that you have sinned, uh, but you have come to God and confessed your sin with a contrite heart. Uh, may, may God continue to work in us contrition over our sins so that we may continue to rely on him for forgiveness.
God bless.